Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. Excited for today's guest. This is very unique. We've got the owner and principal of Top Dog Learning Group, <laughs> and he is the gay leadership dude. We've got Dr. Steve Iacovelli, and he helps workplaces, large and small, create and foster an environment of inclusion and belonging. Very excited to be rocking out today. Hey, are you ready to rock? I am ready, Tim. Let's go. Perfect. So we always start off here on a good note. So tell me a story of success in your business that we can be inspired by. You know, it's it's funny when I was trying to think about um, successes and, and I've been very fortunate. My uh, business, Top Dog Learning Group, has been around for 14 years. So this has been my, my main hustle for, the, for a while. Uh, and we've had lots of ups and downs. Um, you know, I started in 2008, which if you recall the economy, that was a crappy time to start a business, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we made a go of it. And, and, um, you know, we focus on, um, uh, leadership and, uh, organizational development. We focus on, uh, looking at diversity, and inclusion, and creating a sense of belonging in the workplace, as you said, and then we do change management and being resilient. And I think, um, you know, they often say physician heal thyself. <laughs> so, uh, the resilience piece has been something that's played out over and over and over again in. The, the life of Top Dog Learning Group. And, and I think success would be just, you know, we're still here. <laughs> During a pandemic, um, you know, we, just like so many small business owners and entrepreneurs, I, lo I lost everything um, in March, April, 2020. And so uh, to kind of dive a little bit deeper on the business, we typically work with large Fortune 500s and large not-for-profits. And um, we do um, lots of training for, for those folks. And we book things by like February for the entire year because, you know, the training people have to get their you know, hotel rooms and all that good stuff and the catering and stuff. So, so I kind of know my year plan. I know where I'm going to physically be. I know where my team was going to be, uh, my top doggers, as I like to call them. And so, you know, February 2020, life was good. We were all set for the year. Woohoo! And then womp womp COVID. And by April, um, all of uh, our clients said, yeah, you're not coming here to do training anymore. And so we lost every bit of business and it's just like crap. And so, um, you know, it's like the, the success and failure story, I guess you might say, because you know, we're like, well, what do we do? And, and we kind of really rehuddled and, and, and thought about, well, wait, we teach resiliency in times of change. Let's like, you know, take our own medicine. And so we started thinking about, well, what can we do? What, what can we actually take action on or at least influence to kind of keep the doors open and, and, and keep the ball rolling? And, and you know, luckily we treaded water, um, but by, by the summer of, of 2020, uh, we kept going back to clients saying, look, this isn't going away. Let's turn that face-to-face -face training class we used to do into something virtual because my doctorate happens to be in distance learning. So I was Zooming before it was cool. And, um, and so they're like, no, Steve, we're not ready. We're not ready. And then by about September, October, they're like, yeah, this we got to figure things out for next year. So they found all this money to help us convert the classes, yay, income. And then um, 2021, for all four of the, the, the biggest clients we work with, we did everything online. And the, the cool thing is, if you look at the cost per learner between like in person and online, it's it's the numbers are way better for expenses. And, and we know how to create really engaging, cool stuff, because that's what we do. And so, um, you know, 2021 ended up being our best year ever in 14 years. So we really bounced back. And, um, you know, 2022, uh, as of the end of March, we're already 35% above 2021's sales goals. So, um, you know, it's, it's if, if you just patient and have some positive view of the world kind of thing, success will come. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I had a similar trajectory. 2020 was terrible. And then 2021 was awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things that I, I, I hope people are sort of understanding that, you know, things ebb and flow sometimes. And just because you have a terrible year, it's not time to quit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's time to retool a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you just have that bit of patience. Um, but also know that, you know, you know, when you throw it out into the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, whatever bigger, you know, folks you deal with, um, but it, it does still take the effort. You know, it's not like 2020 happened and we just sat there like, what was us? Womp, womp. No, we, we worked our butts off to figure out, let's throw some positivity in the world. Let's do some free webinars for people because they're struggling just like we are. And that came 150% around to, to really do some good stuff in our own business. Yeah. I, and I think that that's the thing. I mean, you were working at something slightly different. And I think that that's the thing is that some people kind of get in this groove of like yeah. working on something that 
isn't working anymore. <laughs> and, you know, so it's kind of like one of those things, don't stop doing anything at all, but start doing something that's going to be maybe slightly different yep. uh, during those. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing about entrepreneurship. I mean, you mentioned it, right? Resiliency. There's always going to be something going on, right? Always, always. It just so happened that we all experience something at the yeah. same time, which is, uh, that's the first time that's happened for me that, you know, I, I think it, well, it's unprecedented, right? That yeah. everybody gets hit by something at the same time. Normally it's like sectors that get hit. Right, right. right. Now, yeah, I, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no. No, I was going to say, you know, it, but it's funny because, um, you know, having taught the concept of resilience for the past like 20 plus years, you know, there's some really great strategies that everybody can do to be more resilient. But the, the and I remember when I was making the class, I read like 20 some books on resiliency and they all say some, some different things, but uh, you know, there's a lot of commonality in what they're saying. And, and my favorite thing that so many of these experts in, in resiliency and change management said was just having a positive view of the world can take you so far. And it's not, you know, I'm former Disney, so it's not like, oh boy, everything's great. It's not that kind of thing, but it's, it's that realistic, um, you know what, like today was a crappy day, but what's something good that happened out of it? That's the type of folks that really can, can roll with the punches and not just survive, but thrive when, when change is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, we have no problem picking out the bad thing that happened all day. So, <laughs> right. you know, I mean, you can have an awesome, awesome day where everything goes well, except for this one thing. And that's the thing you focus on. Yep. And of course it, it ruins your day. So why not flip it around and have, you know, everything goes terrible, but you get that one thing that went well, and then maybe it can make your day. Right? Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, it's, it's a cognitive trick um, called uh, like, like, a, a, like a center of focus. It's like when you get a car and that you, you pull out of the lot or it's a new car to you or whatever. And you're like, wow, everybody has my car. No, they don't. You know, it's just, you have this heightened sense of awareness now. And it's the same thing that we can do with the bright spots in our life. If we, the studies show that if you um, write down the five things that went well for you during that day, you know, you grab your phone or write it down in, in a journal or whatever. And um, over about two or three months, depending on your starting point, you literally will rewire your brain to look for those uh, positivity uh, bright spots in your your day and and it's a really cool way to just really get yourself into the mode of of, of the power of, of looking for the positive versus like you said tim focusing on that negative that one bad thing that happened yeah yeah you you pull out you pull out of the dealership and the you know the, the dealer gets on the phone and goes release the cars <laughs> <laughs> right right tim has his new mini he has to go get it release them <laughs> and then you see them everywhere oh no <laughs> no it's just you 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 notice what you're looking for right um, okay, so now, you know, we, we talked a little bit about some some of the negatives that happened, but, you know, I'm wondering if there's another story of, you know, a bad note, something that didn't go as planned uh, throughout your <laughs> journey, if you could pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a bunch, yes, I was there, of course. Um, but you know, I, when I was thinking about this, and and I don't mean it to be to turn it into a positive, but getting back to the the resilience positivity, that's just kind of how I roll. But um, in so. When I started Top Dog Learning Group, it was just me. And I'm like, you know, I have a fine life. I have a couple of big clients. Everything's awesome. You know, the Lego movie. And then in 2017, I said, you know what? I want to make a bigger ding in the universe to paraphrase Steve Jobs. And, and I, I, I want to build a team. I want to build this army of awesomeness. And, and so I made the concerted effort in 2017 to basically re-image re my business and to go after the bigger fish and to slowly grab new top doggers or team members and, and, and all that good stuff. So it was, it was kind of like, a, like a, I was an entrepreneur again or a, 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 a startup again, you might say. But you know, things were going great. 2017 slowly added like one other top dogger to the mix, you know, 1099 consultant. And, um, you know, we've grown to, to uh, some large, we have a couple of pharma clients for some reason. I have no pharmaceutical background. Somehow I fell into that, that gig and it's fine. But um, one of our pharma clients, um, and they're like a six-figure client. They're one of our, our big fish. And they're lovely to work with. Been working with them for like, you know, now we're up to like 12 years together. But uh, in 2018, um, I'm in Canada 
about to go do a three-day workshop for them. I get a call from the head of training in North America and she's like, yeah, I know you're in Canada, you're in Toronto, gonna do the class, go do it. But just so you know, um, you might've seen the news where we bought this other massive company. I'm like, yeah, I saw you like doubled the number of, of leaders in North America. I'm thinking, ooh, job security. And she's like, yeah, so we're gonna kind of pause everything and get our house in order. We'll catch up with you in, in, in 2019. I'm like, crap. Like, I mean, that was a mat, that was a quarter of the, the revenue for the year. So now it's, you know, Labor Day happens. It's now early September. And I'm like, well, crap, expletive here, you know, for, <laughs> for those. And I was like, what now? Because because the sales cycle that we have is actually pretty long because, you know, people have, you have to get the relationship, investment, the curriculum down, all the good stuff. And so it's like, well, like a couple weeks prior to that, I was at a conference and I'm, I'm out, you know, before, before one of the breakout sessions, I'm sorting business cards. This woman's doing the same thing next to me. And so we strike up a conversation. She's like, what do you do? I'm like, consulting, blah, blah, blah. How about you? She's like, I'm a publisher. I'm like, you know, there's a book in my head that needs to come out on leadership. She's like, well, let's get that book out. So, so well, yeah, I'm really busy with work, but we'll talk about it. Well, then all of a sudden I had a lot of free time. And so, um, you know, what, what I did was, we still tried to, to drum up new business and, and of, of course, you know, placate the existing business we had, but I decided to use that time to create content. And in, in this case, um, I wrote my, my latest book, which is uh, Pride Leadership Strategies for the LGBTQ Leader to be the King or Queen of Their Jungle. And it's it's really based upon um, the competencies that I've seen work for any leader, you know, gay or straight, if you will. But then I kind of talk it through the what I call the rainbow lens. And But I would not have had the opportunity to write this 350 six page book had I not lost the client work, which eventually came back, which is good. Um, but I, I think when, when we talk about, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you know, being mindful of those opportunities and, and you know, yes, it sucked. I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> I was a little concerned about cash flow, but it's like, okay, well, I have the gift of time now. What do I do with it that can propel my business to that next level? And luckily I had the, the, the insight to do that with my, my latest book. Okay. And so what came out of that book? <laughs> a lot of work, <laughs> which is the cool part. Um, I wrote it like a textbook. So I created a, an eight, um, eight week online training course, which we had already planned on launching online in, in early 2020. So that's um, being used by a lot of uh, LGBT employee resource groups, small business owners, and gay and straight, you know, allies are very welcome. Um, it led to, uh, I launched my uh, public speaking uh, or keynote speaking career based upon the stories that I talk about in Pride Leadership. Um, led to my audiobook uh, version of it and a workbook. Now I'm working on the next book after that. I got a ton of notoriety uh, on lots of podcasts and, and stuff. So it's it was one of the best branding things I've ever done. Wow. Awesome. So there's like, that's a cool lesson too, because I mean, we talked earlier about how, you know, during the downturn, it, uh, you know, there's two things you can do. Either you can uh, get out there and try something different and try to, you know, drum some more business. Yeah. Or, and I've, I've heard lots of people in the music community as well, that when this whole thing happened and all their tours were canceled, they went to the studio yeah. and they started writing. And, you know, a lot of these guys have come up with albums that they're like, you know what, I, I in my whole career, uh, I think it was Kid Rock, I think it was, yeah. and I was listening to a, an, an art, uh, uh, an interview and he said, you know, when you put your first album out, you spend years on all those songs and then it finally goes out and then all of a sudden someone's at your door where's your next album where <laughs> and so you might spend 10 15 years on the first album and then have to get the next one out in 24 months yep yep <laughs> right yep, yep. Uh, and and alongside of touring so you know sometimes when something like this happens and there's a downturn or you know you lose a client or something like that maybe it's time to take a step back and work on your business as though you were just starting again and spend that time, you know, in the studio, right? Yeah. I, the, the, the phrase I despise, but it's so good is the pivot. <laughs> you know, we all had to find that pivot or what that looked like. And I, I like, it's so overused. It's like cringy to me, but it's true. I mean, you, you know, what is that, that opportunity? You know, one door shuts, but a window does open somewhere. And, you know, what can we do to find that window and, and maximize its potential? Right. So now, you know, when you're building a business, eventually you're going to have to have some people around you helping you out. You're going to have to build that band, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah and yeah. so I'm wondering, like, what is it? How do you approach, you know, bringing in the right people into your band? 
You know, it's a it's a great question because uh, as with so many business owners, you know, you are your brand, and what you're doing is now trusting others to be your brand and you, and that's that's a that's a little discomforting. And you know, again, we teach leadership, and one of the things we talk about, of course, is uh, the art of delegation and what that looks like. And so, again, physician heal thyself. Um, you know, delegation at its at its core is about building trust with whoever. And so, uh, what we do is. Um, either it's first person trust or it's secondhand trust. So for example, um, you know, my, my first top dogger was a woman uh, who I adore. I worked with Lori for forever. Um, we were both subcontractors for this Australian based company and they were flying us to do training classes uh, for them, you know, to Europe and all through North America and all that stuff. So I physically stood next to her and trained like 50 executives you know, at any one time. And so I'm like, well, I already know you, do you want to come work, do some work with me? She's like, sure. So then, you know, things progressed and then, um, you know, there was an opportunity to grow more. And so I'm looking at my network, but I'm like, Lori, do you know somebody? She's like, I have the perfect person. So I didn't know Anya, this woman, but I had the trust in Lori that I'm like, you know what, you're not going to let me down. And I think when you're building your team, uh, building your band, it, 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 you leverage that trust, leverage that, that um, those relationships you have, and also leverage your gut. Because you know, we all know when we meet someone and, and you give them the benefit of the doubt, but you, you know if it's going well or it's not. And if you create that environment of trust, open communication, providing a, a good feedback, then you're going to be fine. And, and also don't, don't neglect some of the, the uh, actual like businesses that are there to help you, like virtual assistants, you know, uh, social media people. Like, there's some great stuff out there at a pretty inexpensive cost if you just have that ability to kind of take a breath and trust that they're going to do the best job. But also know it's on you as the business owner to communicate what you need and, and kind of how you need it to be done. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the gut. It comes up all the time. <laughs> There's no scientific proof of that, is there? <laughs> but it's just uh, one of intuition. Those <laughs> intuition. Yeah. It's it, powerful. Intuition. Yeah. Is, is huge in business. And, and when you're, uh, when you're talking to somebody and they're not a fit for you, you know it right away. And it's always some sort of like second guessing and going like, Oh, maybe I should give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I mean, why? Like, you know, why would you need to work? I mean, it, it's it's like, you know, even in a relationship, right? I mean, why do you need to work so hard to like somebody? If that's the case, yeah. it's just not a fit, right? So move yeah. on to somebody that you do click with. Life Life's too short. You can find some awesome people out there. And, and if it doesn't work out, you know, it, it, thank you for trying. This is a lovely experience. Hopefully you get something out of it as I do, as I do. And you move on to the next thing. Yeah, exactly. So now what about getting fans? So you've got your band together, you know, you guys are rocking. Yeah. <laughs> and now you got to have somebody watching you, right? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, what did you do to get there? You know, over the 14 years, I've tried a bunch of different things, some horribly done. Um, you know, as I said, Pride Leadership is my third book, um, you know, because I think, oh, you know, people like like to read things and they like authors and they invite authors to speak. And so I, I wrote, um, so my first book was just my dissertation. So my doctorate's in instructional technology and distance education. So doing distance learning before it was really cool. Uh, and so I, I published my dissertation only to get like the ISBN credit. So it goes in databases. And once every like five years, I'll get a 23 cent royalty check. I'm like, mom, did you buy my dissertation again? No, oh, I didn't, I have enough of those. So, but yeah, there was that one. And then I did, I wrote my first quote unquote book. Uh, um, called overcoming poopy e-learning because you know back in that it's actually based on my doctoral research but most people have and still have uh, pretty bad attitudes toward online learning I think this pandemic it'll be interesting to see where it shakes out but prior you know there there was some really crappy stuff people just threw out there like they they put PowerPoint with forward and backward buttons woohoo it's online learning eh, not really um, so anyway that was my book and it was horribly <laughs> received uh, not well I wouldn't say horribly received but no one received it you know I didn't have that marketing thing and I self-published and just kind of like that. Yeah. And, and so, but it taught me a lesson, you know, it's like the marketing for every business takes effort. You can't just build it and they will come kind of thing. So I learned that with, with overcoming poopy e-learning. And, and so I, I think it's, it's a, a strategy of, um, for me and what really garners our business success is being a thought leader and having authority. You know, and, and, and I, we really focus on inclusive leadership. That's kind of our, our niche in, in a good way. And so, um, you know, 
how do I get attention and get the microphone in that space with those right people? So it's, it is doing the social media stuff. It is, um, but you know, don't do social media and expect like, oh, I posted one thing on, on Facebook. Yay, everyone's going to come. No, it's that consistent uh, drumbeat, if you will, of, of presence and, and presence with a value. It's not just say like, come buy our stuff. No, it's, hey, here's a cool article on inclusive leadership I found in Forbes that you might like, or here's here's a free webinar I'm doing that you might enjoy. And, and so you take all these different strategies to, to, to give value to people, and that's going to catch fire. And that's what we found to be successful. It's It takes those, those raving fans that you get, and even if it's, even if your email list is like 20 people, are they 20 people who are going to be your uh, even evangelicals to go out and be like, oh my God. Steve and the gay leadership dude and top dog, they're awesome. Well, boom, they just told their network. And then, oh yeah, you did a free webinar. That was really cool. Boom. Then they tell other folks. And so it's really thinking through that. I, I use podcasting as a guest a lot um, because I, I, you know, Tim, I, as I said to you earlier, I, God bless you for being a, a podcast host because it is a labor of love and I'm not there yet. I'm there almost there to be, a, have a podcast, but you know, be interesting and be on other people's podcasts. Um, you know, have a good story to say, add value, promote the podcast when you're on it. That's a win-win kind of thing. And those are great ways to, to also expand your reach to populations that maybe you weren't thinking about having a chat with and seeing what momentum and value you can add to those groups. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think what happens is that people get a little bit spooked by all this stuff because there's it's very difficult to measure the ROI, the return on investment of, of your time. I mean, if you're going out there, I mean, you mentioned the word free, how many times? And and I mean, when you're running a business, it's just one of those things that you kind of go like, well, and I can't keep on doing free stuff. I need to make some money. Mm. But but you don't realize that, I mean, it, it, maybe you do if you listen to enough podcasts because everybody is beating the same drum. <laughs> go and go out there and, you know, provide value and yeah. then it comes back to you. And it does, totally does. right? Yep. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for every you know, free webinar I do, I'll get like six speaking gigs that are, you know, around 8,000 bucks a pop. So it's like, yeah, that's a good ROI. How did they hear about me? Well, they attended my free webinar that I do once a month. And yeah, you just got to kind of keep it consistent and, and, and people will see the value. Well, and, and I think the, the bottom line here is that like, uh, let's just look at yourself as a consumer. So you go out there, you find a free webinar. What do you get out of that free webinar? Well, you, you probably get some inspiration. You, you probably get a couple little tips, but you're not exactly sure how to make that connection of mm -hmm. like from that tip to, you know, me making a bunch of money, right? And, and what, what, would, what would make that better? Well, yeah. going and talking to the guy, <laughs> you know, he gave the tip, right? So I think that's where people are missing it. They're like, oh, but I'm giving away, I'm giving it all away. Why are they gonna wanna hire me? Well, they're going to want to hire you because you're not really giving it all away. They're going right. to need some guidance. Everybody's situation is unique. And so just because you did this and this and this and got that result, it doesn't mean that I'm going to do the exact same steps and get that same result. Maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking. And maybe this guy, Steve, can help me. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, good business is about relationships. And if, if I'm going to build a relationship with somebody where their first and, and you know, their gateway drug, if you will, to Steve and the gay leadership dude is, hey, I went to a webinar. He was pretty cool. Great. That's that's a first step. That's that's the, you know, we, we just swiped left or right or whatever is this right swiping thing. Um, and then, uh, you know, so then there's a, the next month is, is that, oh, you know, I'm going to bring another friend of mine. That'd be cool. And then, oh, you're offering you know, a free 20 minute coaching. Yeah, I'll take you up on that. And, and it's not just trying to reel them in down the sales funnel, but you're building rapport and, and, and a connection with folks. And that for the business that we do, that is absolutely the best way to get in there. And yeah, it may not pay off that year, but absolutely. I, I've seen folks come around like, yeah, we saw you present three years ago and dot, dot, dot. And you just never know where those uh, impacts that you're going to leave will, will really take root. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we talk a lot on this show about uh, about learning from others and, you know, getting coaches and all that stuff. And uh, almost everybody says, go find some free stuff to get to know people yes. and then hire them. Right. So, you know, it, it really does work. People are looking for your free content in order to decide whether they want to hire you for something. So yes, yeah, uh, it, it definitely works. Now, what about tools? So 
what about um, you know we need instruments we need things that we can use to get us more results and so i'm wondering what are some of the tools that you use for success well you know we use some of the standard stuff so obviously folks like you who are awesome at creating web pages and stuff like that. Yes, you have to have that, of course. But but what are you adding as fresh content to that page? You know, we we leverage the heck out of our blog. Um, and, and we do that with, here's the podcast that we were just on. Here's an article that I had published in a, a magazine that you might find of interest. And then what we do is, is kind of touches upon also the fans piece. In social media, we drive people to that 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 podcast or that blog post or whatever all the time. So kind of giving them that value, but it's also then kind of enveloped around our, our, our overall website. Now our website actually sits on a learning management system. So what we do, and if you're not familiar with that is, it's just a way that you can kind of learn stuff, but through a, a pay uh, system, so it's secure. So we throw a whole bunch of stuff. We throw free classes out there. So you can go to topdoglearning.biz and go to the courses and you'll see some of the free stuff we give. We call them learning tapas. Um, you know, just little bite-sized nuggets of learning that you can kind of consume and, and apply it to your business. But we also um, use, the, I mean, we use Zoom like so many people. Um, we were doing it before the pandemic though. But yep. from a, a, a presentation and a, a virtual classroom perspective, we also use this, this tool called Mm-hmm, and that's a weird name, but I love it. It's MMHMM. Uh, I get no kickback, I'm not affiliated with them. Um, but uh, it's it's a virtual camera. So if you're watching right now and not listening, you see you know my little weekend update slides behind me with my cool little background. Yeah, it's just green screen technology, but it is so awesome. I can do like really, really cool things. Things. Like um, if I want to be, become like, you know, help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope and do some cool filters or, you know, witness protection programming things. And it's silly and fun, but it does some really, really cool things that we love because it gives that visual interest um, that's beyond what everybody else is doing. And, and there's other tools like mm -hmm, as a virtual camera, but we've just found that doing that and coupled with, I mean, these are just PowerPoint slides um, behind me, but but we make them visually impactful. And, and so those are the types of things that, that not only really help tell the story that we're trying to tell, but also differentiate our brand from other folks. And so really trying to make it um, an event. You know, every training class we do, there's a pre pre loop, um, just like when you go to the movies and you're waiting for the show. They have like the little running thing. You can do that in PowerPoint really easily um, for auto advancing. We always do that. We always have music um, that yeah, we have the copyright to, uh, but we, we always allow that. You know, as a way to set the mood in the virtual space, just like we would do in the in the physical space. And uh, we use a um, another tool for um, interaction for our classrooms called Mural Mural.co. Again, not affiliated with them, except I pay for a license. But um, it's a it's a great way. Like if you're in a classroom and the the facilitator sets up four flip charts around the room, well, I can now mimic that online. And so people can go. They double click for like a little virtual post-it note. They can put it wherever they want. You create interactive th things here. So there's some really cool tools out there to really simulate what we used to do in the face-to-face -face experience, um, but just a little bit different. And that's that's part of our brand as well. Love it. Love it. And this is all stuff that you can manage on your own because you're obviously doing all that stuff while we were talking. You don't even know a person that's, that's, Correct. that's Correct. managing that stuff, which you would in, 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 a, in a big event, I imagine, right? Correct. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I'm not sure if the pandemic like accelerated all these tools, but it seems like it might have. I think yeah. that people put some work into it because uh, nowadays, I mean, you see the quality of the online learning that you get has just increased drastically so you know might as well leverage it right and hey if they do have a referral thing you should probably get on board with that i probably should yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think I, I think i have looked at that too but you know and i and that's the thing like the way i run my business i'm all about business karma you know if i find something that works i will tell you you know like this is a cool tool i just found value in it if you will great if not no worries yeah you know, i don't I, I i've met some other uh you know consultants and people who do uh, leadership and change management and diversity consulting who are like keeping their cards to really close. I'm like, nah, that, there's, there's so much work out there. You know, a high tide raises all ships, not just yours. So I, I'm always about, here's some free stuff. Here's what I learned along the way. Here's a tool, have at it, see if it works for you. I agree hundred percent. I know in, in music uh, I've had uh, before the pandemic, I used to play a lot of music. Um, I used to play three, three to five nights a week. And I remember there was this, uh, uh, on one of my nights, I was, uh, I was, I was an open jam host. So I, I brought people in and they would play stuff. 
And there were several people that would try to compete on that same night and they would start their own, you know, jam down the street or whatever it is. And people would be like, oh, did you hear, you know, somebody's so-and-so has got a jam over there, you know, it's going to, and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, and I would, I would promote it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, for me, you know, I feel like we're not competing against each other. We're competing against laziness. We're competing against the couch about people not going out at all. So I would rather have people come out and go to his gym down the street and then swing by mine afterwards. Like it, it grows both of us at the same yeah. time. And I think that that's the same thing in, in all business. If you're promoting other business people, then you're just promoting the business in general. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, totally, totally agree. And and I think, you know, it, finding ways to partner with that quote unquote competitor is such a smart strategy because what did you do? You just doubled your reach by leveraging their network, doing something really cool together. And then now you have like, you know, great street cred from there. You know, it's called the halo effect. It's a, it's a bias in a good way. Um, you get that halo effect from their fans. That's a win-win. I agree hundred percent. So it's time for your solo. Tell me yes. what's going on in your business that's exciting. Ah, it's been a great year so far. Um, you know, just hired yet another top dogger. Um, we secured, uh, we, we try to go for multi-year contracts with clients to do some, some training in addition to kind of the, the small, um, you know, quick wins like uh, keynotes and believe it or not, a lot of people want the gay leadership dude to speak in June. I can't figure out why, <laughs> but I've been doing a lot of, um, planning for, for those, uh, those gigs. And, and, uh, when this, this uh, podcast airs, I believe it will be pride month. So happy pride, everybody. Yep. Um, but, uh, working on, on doing those things, really building that, that uh, public speaking uh, signature talk kind of line of work while keeping the other uh, plates on sticks spinning, if you will. And then I'm um, working on the next book too. Um, so I have, uh, uh, the, and that next book is actually going to be tied to my podcast. I'm finally going to get off the ground and, and join awesome people like Tim and in, in inviting folks to kind of have a chat and, and see where things are. And then bundle that, we started a, a monthly um, LGBTQ uh, leadership networking event, um, which is online called uh, Pride Leadership which is in my book, um, Leaders Circle. And, and that's been like doubling each month. I, it's going to get to a point where I think I have to like cut it off because it's so awesome. But we want leaders to kind of, they come in, I teach something for 10 minutes, like some model, like, a, oh, here's a feedback model that you might like and use for your business. And, and then we do some like networking and small group stuff and for people to kind of network. And what's been really, really cool is people coming back to me and saying, oh my gosh, I met so-and-so at your thing. And now we're Facebook friends or LinkedIn friends and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, that's how we conquer the world in leadership uh, by, by really helping each other out and, and yeah. seeing things. So I'm super excited for, for this year and, and beyond. I think, um, you know, it's, it's what I said at the beginning of our conversation, you, you put good stuff out there, it's going to come back. And, and we're definitely seeing lots of good traction happening at, at the dog house at top dog learning group. Awesome. I love all your names. It's great. So <laughs> how do we find more information about this? Yeah, the best way to, is to head over to topdoglearning.biz, B-I-Z. Uh, there you can find about there about me, about my team, uh, the different programs and courses, uh, the freebies we have. You can see all my books and links to those um, and connect with us and get on our mailing list so you can give you uh, the free stuff, uh, the invites to our events, etc. cetera. Topdoglearning.biz. Awesome. This has been a lot of fun, Steve. So thank you so much for rocking out with me today. Thank you, Tim. And thank you for doing this. I think you're, you're doing a, such an awesome space for, for us entrepreneurs, us homebound, uh, home business folks, especially as that keeps growing. So thank you for the work you do. We appreciate it. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And to the listeners, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment. And we'll see you next time on the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. 